What's up guys and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Mute. So Mute was requested by 3, 2, 1. There is your comment and the person that we shall be doing next is 3, 2, 1. If you guys would like to be them, like them, please feel free to comment down below and I will try to get around to every single one of you. Um, yes, there is a long list of people. I think nearly every operator has been asked for at this point. So I'm just trying to go on whoever's been asked for the longest and also whether I have that operator. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys do go on in to enjoy this video. And let's jump right into it and before we do that my streaming account will actually be linked down below in the description this time not like the last video where i promoted it and it wasn't there for tip number one we're going to talk about what is mute's utility so mute is equipped with forward signal disruptors that interfere with attackers electronic devices with an effective range of 2.25 meters jammers can be placed on a flat horizontal surfaces like floors boxes or tables and place disruptors remain active until destroyed or picked up by mute they have no limit or duration. Signal disruptors allow mute to fill two roles from the utility perspective. Breach denial and anti-intel. So with breach denial, he can prevent hard breaches utility from creating air opening and opening in the wall or hatches. Therefore the disruption range is allows one jammer because it will block one but may die. And one hatch. So basically a jammer can be used to get one hatch and one Pretty much and anti intel, Mute in, Rome, Mute in Rome Six Siege is the best defensive operator in the game when it comes to fulfilling the role of anti intel. Anti intel means providing, preventing the attackers from gathering information. Intel is mainly obtained by drones, which becomes unusable within the jammer's range. Each breach denial slash anti intel defender works differently and has better usage in different scenarios. Therefore, a good rule of thumb is if you want to deny walls, pick bandit, hatches, pick Kaid, and drones, select mute. Of course, all of the things that I've mentioned doesn't does not mean that you shouldn't not use a jammer a jammer to jam reinforced walls. Instead, it matters more of operator's capability in certain situations and things like that. So breach denial capability from three breach denial operators available to mute mute is the least impactful in breach denial scenarios due to the lack of destruction of the attacker's utility by his you basically the f by his utility so basically if someone puts a charge on there the charges won't go off whereas the attacker can still pick it up and go place it elsewhere so if you really want to pick mute if you want to stop them getting intel not if you want to deny a breach Tip number two is how to use his use his utility. The so signal disruptors are easy to use from a gameplay mechanics perspective. They have to be placed on the floor without a duration limit. On top of that, Mute can see an effective range when placing the device, which helps estimate whether the chosen location will get the job done. On the other hand, the answer to the question where to place the jammer is a more complex topic. Place the jammer in a hard to reach spot for the attacking team. Surfaces do not obstruct jammer's blocking power, hence whenever possible place the device behind a cover. And basically if you can place it, let's say there's a desk or just even if it's just round the corner of the door that can help. Consider vertical impact of jammer radius. Signal disruptors affect drones vertically just like horizontally. As a result, as mute rooms succeed, can place his jammer on an elevated surface, especially on consulate where space between ceiling and surface is sufficient enough to impact drones located one floor above. So basically, if you put it on a maybe elevated place from down below, you can actually hit people upstairs. So you've got to think not only about horizontally, but vertically. vertically. And also, furthermore, to optimize the uh, usage of Mute's utility may depend on a couple of factors such as defensive team composition and objective sight. And team composition. Team composition may impact your role due to the potential picks of bandit or Kaid by default. If a defense if a defense has bandit slash Kaid and mute, the focus on uh, is on the mute to do anti-intel and bandit Kaid focuses on breachner. If the defense has only a mute, then prioritize blocking significant walls or hatches from being breached. Only spare jammers should be used for anti-intel, but that's only if all the significant things have been blocked and barred up. And objective sites. So 
Now let's discuss the objective site impact on how to use mute jammers. Some sites in Rome 6 Siege have a higher importance of reinforced walls than other objectives. Taking this role of anti-breach, mute should always prioritise blocking reinforced walls when leading to the location outside of the building. Example, chalet, snowmobile, garage. Booking such angle will give your team a massive advantage over attackers. So blo block things that the enemies can get from outside the building without having to be inside. Other sites without such a wall may not need to be filled by filled with an anti-breach role and a great example of this is dining room on chalet for such an objective mute should focus on anti-intel with prevent attackers from gaining intel because that wall isn't too much important whereas snowmobile garage is important because a lot of people breach there and if you can die a breach there that's very very helpful for tip number three, we're going to talk about interactions and synergy. So mirror, jammers are the best counter to shock drones due to the range disruption. So if you're running a mirror, it works very good to counter the twitch. A castle benefits the jammers placed near armoured barricades as the uh, panel won't be destroyed if an, uh, the disruptor won't be destroyed if, for example, ash blows open the panel. Bandit, in Rape 6 Siege, you can prevent shock drones from picking up bandit's utility. Mozzie, jamming drones makes... Mozzie's job easier to catch them all. <laughs> so you can obviously jam them and Mozzie can just shoot them. And deploy shields. Mute disruptor benefits well from being placed behind a destroyable shield because out of line of sight and it's hard to hit. And his counters are hard breaches, for example, Thermite and Habana because he can stop their charge. Breaching charges obviously fuses cluster charge because um, it cannot detonate whether it's with the jammer but it can be removed. Uh, Twitch shock drones disabled when in the red of the jammer. Same with normal drones. Lines EE1D. So if you are standing on top of a jammer or within the radius of a jammer as a defender, you do not get detected even if you're moving. DKB's logic bomb. Um, so if you're on it, your phone won't ring. And EI is Gemini replicator. Similar to drones, the hologram gets disabled when in range of mute defender. And um, also, I didn't know this. Blitz is unable to use his flash when he's in the range of a signal disruptor and same with Jackal. I knew Jackal but I didn't know about Blitz. So I think that's pretty interesting how if you're being hard pushed by Blitz, if you can try maybe get to a mute a mute jammer and he tries to flash you, he won't actually be able to thatch you. But obviously signal disruptors are countered by Thatcher, Twitch, IQ, Ash, Sophia, and obviously frag grenades, because for multiple reasons they can all be blown up and destroyed pretty easily. Well, I hope you guys did enjoy that video. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to smack that like button and recommend any videos that you have to do in the f or want me to do in the future. I will also leave a link to the Discord server down below if you're not already in that. And yeah, so I hope you guys did go on to enjoy this video. I hope to see every single one of you in the next one. Bye bye.